our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, the Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Um, and I have two people I want to know if people know who they are. The first one is Addie Tritt. Does anyone know who Addie Tritt is? 25-year-old female? No one? Okay. How about Mother Teresa? Show of hands. Who knows who Mother Teresa is? All right. This morning's text is normally a text that we read about November, the end of November, normally right before Thanksgiving, because it's a text that talks about the final judgment. Normally we get this either on Christ the King Sunday or the Sunday before, because it's about the end of times, right? It's a parable about what's going to happen when Jesus calls all of the nations together before him. So why are we reading this on what Sunday of the church here? Fifth Sunday in Lent. Why are we reading a passage that's normally saved for the end of the church year, for the end of times, on the fifth Sunday of Lent? I'll give extra bonus points to confirmation students if they can answer that question. No? You don't even want to venture? Normally your, normally your guesses are pretty good. But the reason we're reading this is, where does this story fall? Next week we're going to read, when we start out there, right? And we all get our what? Palms. We're going to march in and we're going to wave these palms. And next week we're going to read Matthew chapter 21, which is the triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem on the donkey. Okay, and what chapter did we read this morning? 25. And 25 comes after 21, right? So this text actually happens after Jesus enters into Jerusalem on a triumphal entry and before he goes to the cross. This is actually when this text happened, if you really want to get into it. I mean, at the end of Holy Week, right? It's not even Monday, Thursday yet, according to our text. That's coming up still. Jesus is going to have the Passover meal with his, with his disciples. And he's going to take the cup and he's going to break the bread. And he's going to give them this new meal. And then he's going to be arrested and put on trial and taken to the cross to die. He's going to be naked, hungry, thirsty. Sound familiar? What happened in our text today? There were people who were hungry. There are people who are thirsty. There's people who are naked. There's people who are strangers. Right? So back to my two people. Addie Tritt, I said her age was 25, right? She is a resident of Hayes, Kansas. How many of you have ever been to Hayes, Kansas? Anyone? What? You can get there from here, but it's a really small town. And Addie Tritt went into the local Payless earlier this week, and, and, and do any of you know what's happening to Payless? They're closing, right? So Addie Tritt went into Payless earlier this week, and she bought 204 pairs of shoes. First thing I thought of when, when I heard about this was Imelda Marcos. Anybody remember who Imelda Marcos is? How many pairs of shoes did she have? Thousands of pairs of shoes, right? That you couldn't even possibly wear them in a lifetime. But Addie went into his payless and bought 204 pairs of shoes valued at over $6,000. How much do you think she paid for them? $100. There's a picture of her. You can, you can Google it and look it up later. Right? What did then this Miss Tritt do with these shoes? She gave them away. She sent them to Nebraska to families who had just been through a flood, to farmers who had lost everything. And her comment was, dry shoes of any sort are better than wet shoes. She sent these shoes. She went in and spent her money. Now, while, you know, it was only $100, but she's 25, she's probably still in college or close to it. Can you afford $100? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> she went in and spent her own money, bought out the store, bought every last pair of shoes that that store had, and sent them away. Because she knew that there was somebody in need who needed something that she could help provide. Mother Teresa, right, was and is now actually Saint Teresa, no longer Mother Teresa, but Saint Teresa, lived and worked in the streets of Calcutta all of her life, right? Helping the poor, helping the neglected, helping those who no one else would even look at. And giving all that she had to everything that she did. She actually saw this text this morning that we read in Matthew 25 as one of the most important texts in all of the Bible. Because it reminded her that everyone she saw was Jesus. Right? We don't really get that line out of there, right? It says... Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. I'm going back to my, my Bible, that my translation that Bruce got us on last week, um, the message version. And it says, for that verse, Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. And who is the king? Who is the king? Jesus. Say it louder. Jesus. You're allowed to use your outside voice. Jesus. Say it really loud. Jesus. Jesus. Right. That was Jesus. When you did something to someone who was overlooked or ignored, you did that to me. What's the, what's the thing about this text, though, that we completely overlook every time we read it? Because we always want to do the right things, right? And as Lutherans, this is a hard text for us because this is the same text as last week and the week before that talks about if you don't do the right things, you're not going to make it into heaven, right? And last week I said that one of the professors on the podcast I listened to said that grace not, that is not transformative is grace not received, right? If you have received God's grace, then what's going to happen to your life? It's going to change, and things are going to be different. And if your life has accepted that grace and your life has not changed, then you really haven't accepted that gift. You see, these texts are not about doing the right thing so that you can get the right reward. Because that's a very easy trap to fall into. If I'm, not a, if I'm a goat and I haven't done the right things to the right people, then I'm not going to get the right rewards. But if I'm a sheep and I've done the right things to the right people, then I'm going to get the, the reward of what I'm looking for. But is it about doing the right thing for the right person? This, remember, this means yes, this means no. Is it about doing the right thing for the right person? Because the thing of this text is, if you look at both groups, the sheep and the goats, both of them question the king at the end of the statement, when was it that we saw you? Anything and did something for you. You see, it's not about looking for the right person to help. It's about seeing someone in need and doing something about it. This morning as I was listening to things and praying, I was looking over Facebook and I saw one of my friends had posted a, a picture of a woman that said, someday it'll be you. I don't remember her name. But it talked about how over the past five days she was out and about in her town, wherever that was, and she noticed there were people who needed to be helped. There's a man in a grocery store who needed something, and the clerk at the counter told him it was in aisle, whatever aisle, and to go find it. And he stumbled off, wasn't sure where he was going. She left all of her groceries and went and helped him find what he needed to find. Because he was wandering around the grocery store aimlessly. It would have taken him hours, probably, to find what he was looking for if he had to do it on his own. And then she talked about how she was in a restaurant and she noticed someone who was an elderly man who was trying to get out of the restaurant to his car and she could see that he actually had fallen because there was blood on his leg. So she helped him to his car and made sure that everything was okay and that, that he could actually drive himself home. But this was after this man had walked past all kinds of people in the restaurant and nobody doing anything to help him. See, we think that Christianity is about doing the big thing for, the, for somebody and, and getting known for what you do. 
But being a Christian means that we sacrifice our own lives and do what needs to be done for our neighbor. Not because it's going to win us any rewards, but because that's what God did for us. Remember, next week we start the journey of God riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and giving up his own life so that you can have a life with God. It's not about doing something big. It's about doing what needs to be done for our neighbors. It's about being Addie Tritt, going into a Payless store and buying them out and sending those shoes someplace. It's about being Mother Teresa and giving up ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that you can be Mother Teresa. I cannot be Mother Teresa. I think you get what I'm saying when I say be Mother Teresa. Give up, give up of yourself and give it to somebody else. Because that's what God is calling us to. It's about being a disciple. It's about understanding who Jesus is and what he wants each and every one of us to be. So go and look for the ignored and the overlooked. And be Jesus for them. Sit with the kid who doesn't have anybody to sit with him at lunch. Help the person that needs help getting out of the grocery store. Buy somebody coffee. Just be his love for the world. Because that will change everything. If we can follow after him and share his love in everything we do, the world will be a much better place. So go out into the world and love them like Jesus loved you.